We're in the Dark Arrow shop, and today's video is going to be an overview of some of the recent projects we've been working on for the Dark Arrow 1 prototype aircraft. If you're new to our channel, my name is Keegan. My brothers River, Riley, and I are developing a new experimental aircraft. It's a two-seat aircraft designed for a unique combination of speed, range, and efficiency. All right, let's get into the projects. Lately, I've been working on the nose gear doors for the aircraft. Since the mission of the aircraft is speed, range, and efficiency, we have fully retractable landing gear. And to accompany that, we have landing gear doors. So it might look a little weird here, but I'm up by the front portion of the fuselage. It's sitting inverted. We've got our nose gear door sitting right here. We have three doors total. We have two aft doors that open and close left and right, and then a forward hinging door that opens like this. Before I get into the details, some more details about these doors, I wanna take a step back and walk you guys through the steps leading up to this point. Once we had a finalized nose gear door concept in mind, we started by making it come to life in the CAD world, modeling the doors and their main components. Since these components have motion, we also had to confirm possible interferences by checking their full range of movement. After we were satisfied with the nose gear doors, we then had to model up the nose gear door mold. Once the mold was done, I developed the cam tool paths and proceeded to CNC machine the mold with our router. With the mold fully machined, we sanded out the tooling marks and then added an epoxy coating followed by mold release. Since we are anticipating making tweaks to the doors, we shortcut to a prototype MDF mold for now. With the mold completed, I got our infusion materials together and infused the carbon fiber with resin. Once the gear doors were cured, I demolded the carbon fiber from the mold and cut the nose gear doors out. We machined the nose gear door hinges and hinge mounts, assembled our hinge mounts, and bonded the hinges onto the aft doors. From there, I bonded the hinge mounts into place and installed the forward nose gear door as well. During this process, we wrote up some improvements for production and recorded notes for the build instructions, and also took a lot of good photos to aid in the build process. The last step of the process was to weigh our completed parts to ensure we are on track for our 750 pound empty weight target. All right, so there we have it, the completed nose gear doors for the aircraft. Again, we have this forward hinging door that's actually gonna connect to the strut leg itself and articulate with the leg as it moves up and down. And we have the aft two doors that open left and right like this. So we actually considered a lot of different configurations when exploring the door setup. For example, we looked at a J-style hinge. Uh, in the CAD world, we looked at a single door itself that would be attached to the leg, the strut leg. Uh, we looked at a no door setup. We looked at a single door that would hinge just from one side. And we even looked at a door that would roll up essentially and kind of fold in on itself. Uh, a lot of different wacky ideas were thrown around in the early stages, but we're really pleased with uh, these ones. And ultimately why we decided to go down this path is because these doors fit the best overlap of requirements for core functionality, manufacturability, cost, weight, and ease of install for the builder. So there's a few more tasks remaining on this, obviously. Uh, we have to purchase some hardware to integrate this one with the forward strut and then there's some experimentation that we're going to be doing with a spring setup for the aft two doors so looking forward to that stay tuned um, now I'm going to hand it off to Riley who's going to talk you through some of the tasks that he's been working on for firewall forward
So we're at the front end of the aircraft. This is the firewall forward, which is the big section of the aircraft I've been working on lately. And I've been focusing on this side of the aircraft, the pilot side, and finishing up this, which is the battery box. So there's actually a lithium battery underneath this little aluminum enclosure. And what we're doing here is trying to actively cool the battery so that heat from the engine and the exhaust doesn't send the battery outside the battery's operating temperature limits. Uh, so air comes in through this big plenum to cool the engine and then we're bleeding off just a little bit of air through this scat duct into the battery box and then there are a couple exits on the bottom of the box to allow the air to flow in over the battery and then out the bottom of the box. Uh, it's not a lot of air required to keep this thing cool since it's not pumping out a bunch of heat from the battery. We're just kind of making a little air curtain um, over the battery. And I know this looks like a little teeny duct here, but this is kind of a starting point. We can iterate on this a little bit, uh, increasing the exit hole size and increasing this duct size. Uh, it's always easier to make holes bigger than it is to make them smaller. And on top of the box, we've got a couple different components. So this is our master relay. This is basically just a switch that disconnects the battery from the rest of the aircraft electrical system. And then from there, it flows into a couple different fuses and I won't go through what each of these fuses is for. And then on the front of the box, we have a big capacitor and the capacitor is kind of like a mini battery. So we have DC power coming out of this alternator regular alternator regulator up here. And that's a little bit dirty with noise. So the battery filters that out. If the battery went away, this um, capacitor serves a similar function as the battery. So it provides a nice stable DC voltage for our ECUs and the ECUs depend on that stable DC voltage. So a little bit of redundancy there using that capacitor. I'm mostly done with this. There's a couple of little things I have left to do. I have to add a ground lead out of my capacitor and then connect it to the battery or the engine ground. And then also I have to have a ground lead coming out of the side of the battery box. You can't see it from there, but another little task I need to finish up. But other than that, we're pretty close to done with the battery box. So uh, from here, I'll hand it off to River. He's doing a lot more work on the electrical system. So I'll let him cover that. panel here up front. This is the first module of the avionics network and we're calling these modules because the whole thing is broken up into these um, three main sections. Um, yeah so this first section being the instrument panel uh, connects to this bundle here which ties us into the central tunnel box. This is where majority of the wiring goes in uh, through the system. Uh, I mentioned this last time but this is a big chunk of the wiring harness kind of coming all into one node, um, primarily because of our solid state breaker here. And from here, it goes out to the rest of the plane along this network here to the final module, which is our aft electronics plate. And this carries a bunch of our remote modules, which includes our transponder uh, comm radio, our Adahars unit, and then our backup Adahars unit. So. Uh, this is the first time I've had all of this hooked up and talking to each other and um, just short of a few connection changes everything is checking out so uh, to kind of show you a quick demo here you can see in our G3X touch interface we've got our comm radio toggles in the top left we've got our transponder toggles up here these wouldn't show up if I wasn't communicating with those boxes over there um, and so all of that data is being driven into this one interface so that I can uh, toggle those modules from here. And then of course we have our Adahars unit, which I will just do a quick demo here by tilting it up and down. And you can see that that uh, is reflecting on the display accordingly, not just the G3X, but also through our backup unit here, which is driven through a tablet display. Uh, the tablet display we have right now is pretty old, so don't get too worked up that it's a old setup, but we'll, we'll uh, upgrade that down the road. So um, yeah, really happy with how this is turning out. Um, and so the next steps here, uh, obviously there's a lot of sort of cleanup that has to go into this and um, some improvements I'm gonna make before we put it into the plane, but 
this all just goes to show that everything works so that we're not having to find these issues once it's in the plane. I'll leave you guys with some clips of some other stuff we got going on in the shop. If you like this video, consider giving it a like. Otherwise, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Here, I can open it up and I can close it as well. Hard points, and then we've got another one down here that's going to allow us to interface with the uh, trailing length. The one we built in house is on the plane right now, but uh, the optics just weren't at a point where we felt comfortable flying with it. And the advantage of this location is that it gives a little bit better electrical lines routing.